Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. Hey, you ever notice in our shows you never see you below our waist? You never notice. <laughs> uh, Are we wearing pants? Exactly. Well, I wanted to tell you that below this shot, I'm wearing spandex. I've got some neon. Bicycle shorts. Yeah, I'm wearing some neon with mm -hmm. a fanny pack. I'll stand up out. No. no, don't do that. Do that. All right, today on our show, funny things people in the 80s were totally guilty of doing. Dude. <laughs> You're going to love this episode, and it's next. Welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart. I'm Lou Gallagher. I am Corvette Ronnie. And we're glad that you're here today. Very chilly morning oh, here in uh, Sacramento, California. Yeah, chilly and windy. You're comfortable wherever you may be in the country and watching. We thank you for that. In the 1980s, we wanted our hair to be as big as possible, our fanny packs to be as bright as possible, and our spandex to be tight as possible. Ugh. Feels good though. I think I have a rash. Kind of creeping up there. And we were fixated on figuring out how to traverse the Oregon Trail without coming down with dysentery. It was a strange time to say the least. I think that's dysentery. Correction, dysentery. <laughs> but if you grew up in the 80s, chances are you loved every minute of its wackiness. Here are some things that were perfectly acceptable in the 80s but sound utterly ridiculous today. What's up first, Ronnie? Numero uno. Okay. Buying a Betamax because we were so sure it was the way of the future. Oh man, look at those things, how bulky they are. I have a friend who, when everybody else had VHS, mm -hmm. he had Betamax. Just wanted to be different. You had to be different. And back then, you could go to uh, Hollywood Video oh, yeah. and rent movies. Mm -hmm. And they had thousands, tens of thousands of titles on VHS mm -hmm. and about 25 <laughs> on Betamax. So Take you about a month. It didn't work out so well for him. Uh, this says, during the 80s, you either invested in a VCR or a Betamax, and the smart money was on Betamax. Maybe not. Uh, they were so popular that Sony sold 2.3 million recorders in 1984 alone. Wow. That is something. Well, it turns out 2.3 million people bet on the wrong pony. Story of my life. Today, Betamax mach machines aren't even something that people get nostalgic about no. uh, like they do with vinyl or cassettes. Right. It's the technology that nobody wants to admit they ever own. We still have a couple of VHS machines just because they have videos like our wedding video is on one. Not yeah. that we watch it regularly. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. You kind of just have to keep one. You know, I would imagine for your grandson and stuff, it's easier to throw a, you know, go someplace and find something kid-like on VCR. Right. Throw it on. Yeah. Easy for them to work, too. They can't hardly mess it up. Yeah. You had to make sure that you marked the tape that had the porn on it with an X. Yes. Because otherwise... Yeah. It could get mixed up. really could. <laughs> All right, so we're talking 80s today. We needed our hair to be big and poofy. Uh, and that look could only be achieved with copious amounts of Aquanet. Aquanet. A person can't be expected to show up for a Bon Jovi concert with flat hair, can they? No. So, yeah, Aquanet. I remember, you're, you know, when you'd go someplace with a girl before uh -huh. she'd get out of the car to go in. The whole car was... My the the windows on the inside of yeah. my wife's car, mm -hmm. the stuff was it turns into glue, <laughs> and it's hard to get off. <laughs> it takes hot water and, so, and copious amounts of soap to get that off. There. I once heard, "The higher your hair, the closer to God." <laughs> that's I think that's from down south, <laughs> probably. Yep. All right. Next up is watching terrible videos on MTV. I want my MTV. I take exception to that. There were some great videos on MTV uh, back when MTV was actually, you know, music television. When was that? That was in the eighties. 
there were also a lot of good videos and a few duds. For sure. Yep. Uh, and we sat through it all, the good, the bad, and the really, really bad. Uh, after the network launched in 1981, we watched the Starship video, We Built This City. Man, I've heard that like a thousand, hundred million times. I know, me too. I used to play that song on the radio. Uh, maybe even thousands and millions of thousands and gazillions of times until it turned our brains into mush. We watched the Wham! video for Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go. Like it was court ordered. Basically, there was, there was nothing we couldn't sit through, because you never knew what was next. Right. You had to watch the crummy ones. Yeah. Like uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, never gonna give you up. Never oh, gonna. Oh, Rick Astley. Rick Astley. Yeah. Uh, yes. I used to play him on the radio too. God dang. Oh man. <laughs> never gonna give you. Up. <laughs> Music was awful. That's a terrible song. All right. Memorizing phone numbers. Like anybody younger than 30 today would even know what that means. No. Most people don't even know their own phone number. No, I don't. Yeah. Before smartphones, calling someone up meant lifting an egregiously heavy book and flipping through it to find the right phone number. It was a real nightmare, especially if the surname was something common like Smith or Jones or Wesson. <laughs> On the upside, there were coupons to Domino's Pizza. Plus, knowing someone's digits by heart was a sign of true love in the 80s, Ron. I mm. can still remember two of my best friend's phone numbers uh, because I dialed them literally a billion times. You know, if you dialed and they were on the phone... Mm -hmm. You got a busy signal. I got a busy signal the other day. I didn't know what to do. I, it's so unheard of anymore. <laughs> Everybody has call forwarding or yeah. voicemail. Something. If you're on your phone, it goes to voicemail. <clears throat> All right, this next one. Not everyone may not may, may remember these. Uh, it's decorating with Nagel prints. Oh, I used to see those in Tower Records. Everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, somehow these weird portraits of eerily pasty women... <laughs> like the two pasty white guys. Yeah, I know those guys. They're great. <laughs> Painted by Patrick Nagel became so popular in the 80s that they were literally everywhere. Yeah, everywhere you went. Hair salons, Duran Duran album covers, dentist offices, uh, bachelor pads, you name it. Uh, they really, we had friends that collected them. And they must have had, I don't know, like five or six. And they are all kind of similar yeah uh and they are i don't know i i never saw the the attraction in them uh our friends bought them because they were supposed to be collectible and going to be worth a lot of money with all due respect to your friends that's white trash right there <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> sorry i gotta say it like it is all right in the 80s oh my god i'm afraid to even show you this picture this is great in the 80s it's like we were all determined to wear clothing that was bright enough to be seen from space. <laughs> was the lighting generally so low during the decade that we needed to become our own personal sources of fluorescent lighting? <laughs> we think not. Sorry about that picture. I know you can't unsee it. It's... Uh, you know what? In on those people, yeah, it looks okay. It looks good on you. Yeah, it looks did you get good that with them. a bowl of soup? Yeah, what what's do, that? A banana in your underwear? <laughs> Wouldn't look that good with me. <laughs> Ronnie says to me when he saw this picture, "That looks like me and my wife." Yeah, and I said, "Yeah, all these two over here by the pizza by place, by the pizza place, standing in line." <laughs> yeah, yeah, slightly yeah. overweight. Yeah, yep, that's you. All right, this next one. Oh, I remember these too. I could never wrap my head around this. Getting excited about faxing. Yeah, you could actually send something to somebody. You could send a piece of paper to somebody. Yeah. It was like a time portal. Right. It was like a time machine. Yeah. You take a piece of paper, and then within four or five minutes, right, maybe. somebody else would have that piece of paper. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Just think what it did to um, document places like title companies and stuff. Oh, God, right? yeah. It really sped the process oh, out. Oh, hell yeah. yeah quite, a, quite a bit. That was some technology. Uh, when fax machines became an office staple in the eighties, it was really it was a really exciting moment for employees everywhere. For the first time, you didn't have to mail and sign in a form 
or bring it in person. Yeah. You could simply place it on this newfangled device, punch in a number, and it would arrive at your recipient's fax machine where it would print a warm, fresh copy. Yeah. I, and you remember the sounds that it made? It was the... <laughs> yep, yep. And then, of course, I do remember at the Sheriff's Department when we first got one in an office, this, as soon as it would come in, and we, there's a fax coming in! Oh, uh, yeah! The, we gotta get it! Yeah, it's <laughs> like some headline. So, well, what could it be? Who no, knows? Nowadays, when a fax comes in, it comes to our work center, and somebody brings it to you, and they go, here you go, and you go, oh, more work. <laughs> yeah. Just more work, that's all that is. Damn fax. Next up, people get addicted to video games today, but at least the games have compelling stories, lifelike graphics and meticulously rendered endless worlds. That really wasn't the case in the 80s, though. If you had an Atari 2600, there were games where you had to eat pellets or jump over barrels and deal with gorillas. Yeah. <laughs> Some of us would spend 16 hours straight playing Frogger. That's 16 hours of jumping on logs and avoiding traffic. Yeah. What was wrong with us? Yeah. Well, Frogger was... 16 hours. Eh. And you know what? I used to work security uh, for the sheriff's department at a, it was actually, we call it off duty. So the video arcade would hire us. But after they kicked everybody out and while he was closing down, uh, he would say, hey, pick a machine and play it. Oh, I play for 15, 20 minutes, Street Fighter or mm -hmm. whatever. Video games can be really addicting. Yeah, I don't have that gene, I guess. Um... Or I just have way too many other priorities. I, I, well, it's it's the thing of, ooh, I almost made it. Yeah. I want to go a little bit further. Mm -hmm. and you I made this that. mistake last time. If I don't do it this time, I'll get right. to the next. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. I used to play video golf. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was really fun. Yeah, Until you learn how to really work the game. Right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this next one. Wearing head-to-toe denim. Oh, yeah. Hello, Jay Leno. Yeah. Are you out there? <laughs> I had a girlfriend. They had the <laughs> jeans and the jacket and the jean shirt. It was very popular. Yeah. Uh, a little denim goes a long way. But in the 80s, fashion took jeans to a whole other level. Uh, we're talking head-to-toe denim. Denim skirt. Denim shirt. Denim jacket. Denim pants. See? Uh, denim shoes. Sure, you could get those, too. Uh, the only thing missing is denim underwear. They had that, too. <laughs> oh, man, that's too much denim. That's a lot of blue. I'll tell you what. Uh, I used to wear a white shirt, though. I'd wear a white shirt with it. I, I mean, who doesn't wear blue jeans, though? I mean, everybody still wears blue jeans. Do you have them on? Uh, no, no, you have sweats on. I got I sweats on because it's cold. But yeah. No, uh, actually, I have uh, spandex. <laughs> that's right. You're spandex. Next up. Everybody was doing it. I had a girlfriend who was teaching it. You were hot if you had these leg warmers on doing jazzercise. Ooh, jazzercise. We knew that all you needed to make a workout fun were leg warmers, leotards, and a bunch of sassy kicks and swivels. Sure, you may laugh now, but we were having a great time dancing and getting fit in the 80s. Getting physical, physical, I want to get physical. Uh, this one... And it's true, this this was the yoga pants of the 80s. Spandex. Yep, spandex. Mm -hmm. Mostly shorts. Yeah. Because they were initially uh, bike shorts. That's what I'm wearing. Very popular for bike shorts because they had the little padded butt. Mm -hmm. So you could ride a lot longer with the padded butt. Yeah. If you ever wondered why people today walk around in yoga pants... They're like actual clothes compared to the spandex shorts that we wore back then. Yeah. Uh, it's mostly the fault of the 80s. We were trailblazers in the art of wearing spandex shorts or pants that were way too form-fitting for most mixed companies. Do you see that picture right there, Ronnie? Yes. I had a girlfriend who came to my house one time to pick me up. Yeah. And she was wearing that jacket those shorts and top, uh -huh. and she had red cowboy boots on her naked legs. <laughs> I thought she was a dream. That's a good look. Yeah. All right, I was look. just watching. Hey, do you ever watch Goldberg's? 
all the time. Okay. I just saw the episode uh, where Murray, uh, they were talking about how he's a creature of habit. Yes. And um, he denies it. I, it's, it's not true. I'm, I'm not a creature of habit. <laughs> she opens up the cupboard and there's like 156 packs of old Coke. <laughs> I saw that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. There are so many things in the world to be legitimately upset about. But in the 80s, there was nothing more egregious, egregious than our favorite brand of carbonated sugar water being replaced with a slightly different tasting carbonated sugar water. The public outcry was so intense when new Coke was introduced in 1985 that it almost felt like classic Coke supporters were on the verge of forming an angry mob and marching through the streets with pitchforks and flaming torches, Ron. How dare they change Coke? Oh, God. And you know, the Goldbergs does a really unbelievably great job at pointing out some of these little yeah. 80s idiosyncrasies. Yeah, for sure. They, it's a great show. Yeah, show. They, they and totally they're still making it. new ex, uh, uh, episodes, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. And they're, all, they're still good. Great family show. All right. <laughs> this one, Dressing Like Madonna. Oh, I did that. <laughs> yeah no and you know what i was definitely dating in the early 80s yeah me too and uh some of my girlfriends thought they were the second coming of madonna when i was in like, salt lake city doing mornings yeah um and i had a relationship that broke up and i got introduced to this girl that worked at a marketing firm she looked exactly like madonna only catch was, I wasn't a Madonna fan. I'm not a, you know what? I'm not a Madonna fan. I'm not even a big Madonna looks fan. We call her Madge at our house. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Madge. I, I don't What's think Madge she's, up to? She's not all that to me. But, no, she's not. Uh, the material girl was as popular in the 80s for her clothes yep. as she was for her music. Sure. Maybe more so. Mm -hmm. uh, and girls everywhere tried to emulate her style wearing black bustiers, silver crosses, lace gloves, and giant scarves as headbands, like the love child of a vampire and a magician. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's funny. Yes. Bootlegging was essentially a day job for the Duke boys on our favorite 80s TV show, Dukes of Hazard. There it is, the general. Boss Hogg and his police force weren't chasing them for driving too fast. They were trying to bust them for smuggling moonshine. Dang. And yet, there we were, rooting for them. Them Duke boys. They're them at it Duke again. Duke boys are at it again. <laughs> <laughs> All them Duke boys is at it again. <laughs> All right. This one, boy, and I was a big part of this. Believing the drug, drug epidemic could be solved by just saying no. And that'll work. Just say no. No. And drugs will go away. Didn't work out Didn't that work well. That you know what? Either. Kudos to her for trying. Right. The war on drugs and First Lady uh, Nancy Reagan gave us this oversimplistic solution to drug and alcohol addiction. Just say no. Magically. Um, if only it was that easy. It's like suggesting that the trick to getting out of poverty is by saying, more money, please. <laughs> that works for me. Yeah. More money, please, sir. It's never worked for anybody. No, it hasn't. No. All right, we're going to wrap up this episode today with number 20. Tying a sweater around your neck that you don't have any intention of wearing. As the 1984 film Making the Grade proved, this was the universal uniform worn by preppies. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Oh, she's a preppy. Oh, that was a thing. Who had so much money, they wore entire cable knit sweaters as accessories. It's just further proof that the 80s really were utterly ridiculous. And we lived through them somehow. And you know what went along with this is you'd see the collar. Oh, the flipped up collar, yeah. Yeah. I don't have that one on today. They'd stand up, stand up the collar. Yeah. Like that. That was cool. I wonder if that started with Elvis. Or maybe Dracula. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That yeah, could be. Yeah. Looks... Well, I, I, you know, the 80s is a decade when I look back on, um, I was coming of age, I got my out, I got my first radio job in the 80s, I think it was 1984, um, and I'll tell you, um, the music really sucked. 
I, I, it was all not according over, to Adam. Overproduced. It's terrible. Um, not a lot of quality lyrics. No. Uh, it was more about the video than the music itself, most often. Right. Um, yeah, but we did. We had MTV going on. It was like the greatest thing. You know, another thing that was not mentioned here was. I believe in the 80s was when we first got cable television. Uh, I was living in an apartment. Yeah. And it was the first time it wasn't Comcast back then. I can't remember who it was. Uh, oh, yeah. There was a different thing. I lived in an apartment. They came knocking door to door mm -hmm. selling it. And I thought, why would I pay for TV? And then the guy showed me, oh, well, here's all these things you can watch. You're going to have like 125 different channels including one that sports 24 hours. No way. And I'm like, shut up. Yeah. What? <laughs> and that is when ESPN, that's when I first got addicted to yep. ESPN. Mm -hmm. So, and we bought it. We of bought course. We bought uh, the TV. Back then, though, you had to have a little uh, satellite dish that oh. you picked it up with, and they had to put it up on the roof of my apartment complex. I bet that people like, love that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember that I used to be able to watch uh, Chicago Cubs games on WGN. Yep. And in the middle of the day, I, yep. I'd get off work like about eleven o'clock in the morning, and I'd go home and there'd be a game on TV. I could watch a game in the middle of the day during the week. Well, I remember when my mom, when I told my mom that we got cable TV or whatever we called it back then, satellite or something. Um, she said, that's insane. Yeah. Paying for TV. TV is free. Right. I'm like, eh, yeah, Mom, but not good TV. Invest in HBO. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And not only that, start a company called Netflix. <sighs> and while you're doing it, chill. Yeah. All yeah. right, we, we got to get out of here, oh, Ronnie. Oh, boy, if only. All right, thank you so much for watching today. Hope you've... Uh, Enjoyed our little look back at the 1980s and all the ridiculously stupid stuff that we used to do and wear and even eat for that matter. Uh, if you haven't already done so, check out our website. It's menaresosmart.com. We are also on Facebook, at Men Are So Smart. And, and now on iTunes. iTunes. You can check us yeah. out in podcast form. Simply do a search for Men Are So Smart or Gallagher Entertainment, each one of those uh, will take you to our podcasts. We hope that you'll enjoy them. Uh, and there's a bunch of them on there. Absolutely. At least yeah. 50 that I know of. Yeah. So check it out. Maybe when you're walking or driving, for that matter, in your car, uh, you can take Men Are So Smart with you wherever you go. All right. My email address is lou at menaresosmart.com. Mine is Ronnie at menaresosmart.com. Thank you again for watching. This has been another episode of Men Are So Smart. We'll see you next time.